All right, first and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Shai. Give double honors to the elders that rule well and honors and Shalom to other brothers out there doing the work in truth and sincerity. All right, it's Brother Alan's Arban Lawyer here to do um, commentary on uh, Seti verse Nasi. Um, you know, same thing, kind of, y'all seen what I did with the polite verse, the Brother Tazar Yak um, debate. Uh, but yeah, so I just, you know, went over some, uh, want to address some of the things that Seti said that I don't feel had the clarification on, uh, that the brother gave the clarification on, um, or addressed and uh, address some of the things that that brother might have said that I uh, wouldn't necessarily agree with and also address a couple of things Lord Alba and, uh, uh, Dr. Ali Muhammad said in, in, uh, in the, in the Q and A. I didn't watch their whole debate, but, uh, there was some things said during, um, the Q and A that I kind of want to address on. I don't want to get into it. Um, and, uh, first thing first, uh, said he said something like, uh, uh, oh, why do y'all gotta go into other books to prove your kings and prove this shit? We don't have to go into other books. And I don't understand why you would make that statement. See, this is, this is the thing that a lot of these comedic and these out people who are opposing of Israel do. You're gonna tell me that I gotta go, uh, you're gonna tell, you're gonna condemn me for using one book, but then tell me, why do I gotta go outside of my book to prove my kings? We don't have to go outside of the book. All we need is this book. But when we come to y'all, y'all wanna refute this book. So y'all ask us to bring sources outside of the book to validate the book. That's the only reason we did it. If you didn't ask us to do it, we wouldn't have to do it. You see what I'm saying? So that that was ridiculous that you would even make that statement. The second is, he said, oh, y'all ain't have tombs and structures and all this madness. Okay, number one, we're not big on uh we weren't even that we weren't even really into building these great tombs and things of that nature. That wasn't even our practice, number one. Number two, now King Noble brought this out, which I want uh, some of you comedic niggas to address, because King Noble would be keeping it a hundred on you niggas, man. At the end of the day, he was bringing out how the reason why the ancient Egyptians, the people of Kemet, went into such great uh, uh, detail and uh, uh, not detail, but um, made it such a big deal to mummify and put people in them sarcophaguses and lock them in the pyramids is because necrophilia was rampant in ancient Kemet. Why don't you niggas bring out that, that, that you have people, it was a big thing for people to fuck dead bodies in ancient Kemet. Why is that getting brought out? That's why y'all went into all that, uh, uh, all uh, into uh, all that trouble just to bury a motherfucker, man. Okay, but you said what? No tombs. Why didn't we bring build any tombs for our kings and our prophets? Well, I want you all you niggas to Google this shit. The cave of the pa patriarchs, tomb built for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, uh, Timnath, uh, uh, Timnath Hares. Okay, where the tombs of Nun, which is the father of Joshua, Joshua himself, and Caleb are buried. Joseph's tomb, the tomb of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh, the tomb, of, the tomb of Samuel, the tomb of David at Mount Zion, the tomb of the prophets, where Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi are buried, and the fortifications of ancient Israel and Judah is a book you can read about more fortifications and structures that we have built and also forts of Judea. Two books you can go get, and you can verify all these sources, Google them again, Cave of the Patriarchs, Timnath Hares, Joseph's tomb, tomb of Samuel, tomb of David at Mount Zion, the tomb of the prophets, and the books, fortifications of ancient Israel and Judah, and forts of Judea, okay? Go get them books, go research them places. We did have tombs, and we did build structures and fortifications, but unlike y'all, we didn't put a huge thing into worship in fortifications and structures, because more important than the then the actual structure is the mind that invented and created that motherfucker, man. Okay? And that's what you niggas do. You niggas love worshiping idols as uh, as opposed to the mind behind it, man. You see what I'm saying? Why would you worship that idol when it took you to make it? It doesn't make any sense, man. But that's what our people are giving to idolatry. And again, King Noble, he brought that out about you niggas, man. And you niggas care more about all them structures and ancient Kemet more than you care about the actual people of Kemet, man. Which is crazy. Um, and then, you know, but again, you know, we're not in the, uh, 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 we're not, we're not in the, we're not really in the, uh, monuments and the Lord never told us to ever build a, a build a, um, build any structure that, uh, that, uh, went past was over three stories in height ever. So, you know what I'm saying? That's again, you, you talking about these great pyramids and structures. We was never told to do nothing like that. That again, that's not our practice. 
we care more about the people than the than the actual than the structure. Um, and but uh, uh, that's a problem that our people have in worshiping these things. Okay, and then again about the pyramid. Now here's the thing about the pyramid. Oh, y'all say y'all built the pyramid, but y'all ain't never built nothing like the pyramid. Here's the thing: we're not we're not saying the pyramid is our building. We're not. Uh, uh, basically, we were the slaves at that time in Egypt to build certain of the pyramids. So the fact the fact is this: that that that's just like saying that the White House is our building because we built the White House. We built up America. This is ours. No, it's not ours. This is the white man's shit. But we was the slaves. That was on the scene during the time. So they sat there and they designed it. They had an idea of what they wanted. And we fucking went and did it. That's what happened with the White House. And that's the same thing that happened with the pyramids of Egypt. The pyramids of Egypt ain't nothing but the damn White Houses. And the Capitol buildings. And the, the, the state senate and all that bullshit. That we have here in America. But just for that time in Egypt. And they had day slaves at the time. Which was Hebrew Israelites. So called blacks and Hispanics. And Native American Indians. Build it. Okay. So we ain't saying that that's our building. We just saying we built the shit man. That's all. It's like this. The Egyptians is is like the white man. So the Egyptians, they had the white hat on and we had the yellow hats on. And if you're familiar with construction, when a nigga got the white hat on, he overseeing it. That's his shit. The niggas with the yellow hats, they just the worker niggas, man. And that's what we was for the pyramids. That's what we saying. You niggas act like we saying, oh, the pyramids, that's Israel shit. No, y'all can have the goddamn pyramids. Fuck them goddamn pyramids. We don't give a damn about them pyramids. We built them pyramids off slave labor, man. Just like we built America off slave labor. And this fuck America, man. All right? But real quick, that is a problem that our people had. Is uh, often is falling too deeply in love with the things that we created. More so than our creator that gave us the power and the life to be able to create things like that. That made us in the, the most high God that made us in the gods of powers. And I'm going to get this real quick. A couple scriptures. Uh, this is this is Judges 8 and 27. And Gideon made an ephod thereof and put it in his city. Even in uh, o Ophrah and all Israel went thither a whoring after it. Exactly. So Gideon made an ephod. For those of you that's not familiar with ephod, an ephod is a breastplate with 12 precious stones in it. Okay. That the high priest used to wear in Israel. Indicative of each of the tribes of Israel. But it said that Gideon made an ephod. And the ephod had these precious stones. That, and it was so magnificent that the whole nation went a whoring after this idol. But it was just a it was an ephod that our that 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 uh, that that Gideon himself made. So who's better that that ephod that he made or him for making it or the most high God for empowering him to be able to make such a magnificent thing. See, our people are not being logical. And that's what this whole comedic ideology and doctrine perpetuates is our people being illogical and worshiping structures and idols. More than they're worshiping the creator that empowered them to create them structures and idols. You see what I'm saying? First off, you are more important than anything you can build, number one. And number two, the most high God that made your ass is more important than anything, period, man. But our people, they get this selfish ideology and mind state. But it's not, I'm not surprised at it that y'all is doing that now because we did it then. You see what I'm saying? And let me get something else here in Ezekiel 16. Because uh, Ezekiel 16 is, is a beautiful chapter and it goes into a lot of what's so wrong with Israel, our people. Where are we at? Ezekiel 16. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to start at uh, 14. It's Ezekiel 16 and 14. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. So all the world, uh, uh, basically, we, we got a, a, a name of renown because of our, our greatness, okay, among all the other nations. For it was perfect through my comeliness, through my communion, the Lord empowered us to, to get this renown, okay, which I had put upon thee. So he put his own comeliness on us, okay, as his chosen people, as blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, okay. Uh, save the Lord God, but thou didst trust in thine own beauty. Exactly, we trusted in our own beauty. We trusted in all the, the glorious things that we was wearing. 
Y'all trust in the, y'all think we Egyptians, which we not, and y'all trust in them pyramids, trusting in this, trusting in trusting the things that our hands formed, as opposed to the thing that formed us and empowered us to create these things. Okay. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and playedest the harlot because of thy renown, and pouredest out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. His it was. Okay, so that's our problem with our people. Trusting in our own beauty all the time, man. And that breeds that selfish mindset and mentality that our people have that got us so destroyed. You see what I'm saying? Uh, all right, uh, but I'm going to move to the next. Um, oh, and real quick. This guy, uh, this guy said he, his open around was... Stating his resume. And what that whole stating your resume thing was, Seti, let's keep it a hundred. And I'm just going to come straight, Seti. The boy mopped the floor with you, man. All right? The boy really mopped the floor with you. And you really dis Him and Polite really disappointed me. I thought both you niggas was, was going to come way harder than you did, man. All right? You was supposed to... Seti. Seti, you was supposed to bring the dagger. Where was the dagger, Seti? <laughs> But, uh, so Seti in, the, in the, his opening round, what he, what he tried to do was play a little game that the white man loved to play. And it's a sick ass mind game known as the Heligan Dialectic. All right, I'm gonna write it out. But it's the Heligan Dialectic. That's what Seti was playing with his whole resume. And, uh, YouTube it or, or Google Google the game so you can get a, a broader understanding of it. I'm just gonna go over it briefly. Basically, what it is is you're gonna bring two opposing views. Hold on. You're gonna bring two opposing views, right? And you're gonna have um. Two, you got one person here, you got one person here. These these two are opposites. And what happens is they both, you know, they both uh 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 you know give their views. But what happens is during some point either you'll have a, a, a so called neutral party or either one of these people could do it to where they give you a reason to substantiate the fact that you should no matter what they say, no matter how logical it is, no matter how it affects your morals. No matter what they say, because they have certain qualifications, you should believe it and go with what they say and their opinion on the matter because of their qualifications. So when the majority of the people now, Nasi, he might have done a lot of debates. You see what I'm saying? He was he was a knowledgeable brother. He knew his shit. He was on top of it. But the fact is this. A lot of people didn't know him, especially I know a lot of people in that auditorium didn't know him. So the whole thing is with that. In people not knowing him and in people knowing Seti and knowing his reputation and knowing his resume, they're going to, and, and, and Seti stating that and putting that in the air, putting that vibration out there. Now people are going to immediately mark out for Seti and say, okay, I'm with whatever Seti says, no matter what information is brought out to refute what he says, because I know his resume. So because I know his resume and because I've seen him do this and because I know he did this study and that study and this scholastic work and research, I'm going to go with him regardless. And that's what the Heligan, the Heligan dialectic does. That's its, you know, its purpose. And you can look it up. Bill O'Reilly is a master at playing it. Go on YouTube, look it up. It, you know, it's crazy. So-called white men play it a lot. And what said he tried to do, he tried to play that Heligan dialectic, man, with his opening round. So, 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 so from that, that was his, his found, that's the foundation that he laid. So from that point forward, there were certain people in that crowd that fell for the mind game. So no matter how hard the brother went on him, they gonna say, well, said he won. Said he brought the more information. Said he didn't, said he really didn't do shit. I'm just gonna come straight. He was supposed to bring the dagger. All right, but, uh, where I'm at? Okay. Oh, and, and this dude said homosexuality, right? He said, first off, he said, how is that homosexual? homosexuality in Egypt when Egypt is a uh uh it deals with the matriarchs okay he says when you're a homosexual you hate the other gender come the fuck on turn on the TV look at all the faggots that's on TV who do they want to be a woman they don't hate the other gender when you're a homosexual when you're a faggot you're effeminate and you want to be a woman so of course you're going to exalt a woman if you're a faggot 
because that's who your ass want to be. Stupid. And it was there's it wasn't homosexuals in Egypt, but there's phallics all over that motherfucker. But I want to address that whole statement about the matriarch. Okay, homos and matriarchs. Okay, this is um real quick. This is from the uh a documentary called Of Gods and Men. Okay, and it's dealing with voodoo. All right. Now um uh in voodoo there's a deity called uh. It's really Frida, okay? And basically, she's like the same thing as Mary is in the Catholic Church, the same thing that Isis is in Egypt, the same thing Semiramis is in, uh, in, in Babylon, okay? It's the same exact deity, this mother of God deity, all right? And that's what uh, Seti say they worship in Egypt, okay? But let's see the vibration that uh, that, that, uh, that, that deity uh, pushes out. In voodoo, male homosexuals are seen to be under protection of Ezruli Frida. Several men feel Ezruli Frida made them gay. Okay, so that whole uh, matriarchal exalting the woman philosophy and that whole vibration is proven to uh, put a gay vibe on dudes. So there's certain guys, and when you watch, if you watch the documentary... Um, you'll see that certain it, certain guys are giving testimonies to that they wasn't gay until they began to worship as really Frida and that vibration and that spirit of homosexuality hopped on it. So that spirit of ISIS and that spirit of Semiramis and all that bullshit is what hopped on them niggas to turn them into homosexuals. Hence why now we see such a, a such a rapid increase in homosexuality. That all came with the fashion of wearing them rosaries. And them tight, effeminate clothes and acting effeminate. You see what I'm saying? That all came in around the same time. And that's when we've seen this, a, a huge spike in faggot activity, especially amongst blacks and Hispanics. Why? Because it's all about that worshiping of the queen of heaven's spirit. That matriarchal spirit breeds and perpetuates homosexuality, nigga. So what you talking about? A homosexuals can't uh, exist in a, a matriarchal society. You're out of your damn mind, dude. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and then this nigga said This is what really fucked me He said He said they call the Lord Adonai Which is really Adonai Which is really not even Adonai When you go into the ancient Hebrew But he said that goes back To the Greek faggot god Adonis Right? Alright well First off nigga You must really not do your research First off And then he put Pictures of a professional wrestler up there Not the actual you know, uh, uh, I think he might have had one image of the actual paintings from Greece, but he had uh, uh, images of Adrian Adonis, professional fucking wrestler up there. Okay, which is ridiculous. But but again, y'all love pictures. You ooh and ah at the pictures that this nigga brings when they don't even prove his point. First off, first off, Hebrew comes before Greek. That's a fact. Okay, number one, and really Adonai goes back to a, 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 a really where, where the Greeks adopted it from was the Phoenicians, which are Hamitic Africans. All right, when you actually go into it, nigga, you gotta do your research, Seti. Come on, dude. 